in uh, to do his job. Now, uh, one of the things that I heard, Gordon, and I heard this come out of your mouth, and it really it, it impressed me, but it did not surprise me because I've gotten the opportunity and the honor to get to know you over quite a bit of time. Uh, was that you pledged to give half of your salary to nonprofit organizations. Would you like to um, explain well, I, to I, the I, audience I, about I, that? Well, you know, I just finished my arbitration. See, I got fired here by Sheriff Gillespie February the 10th, uh, 2014. Uh -huh. And it was a, a political termination. Right. An arbitration, and of course the department uh, attorney, was taking a lot of shots at me, and uh, I guess trying to get me all riled up. And uh, he was telling me how if I was uh, allowed to go back to my former position, I would actually be making less money right. than what I'm making right now. Uh, and I told him uh, emphatically, it just came right out, it's never been about the money. Right. It's it, it is totally about the job and what I can do to better my community and to better myself. The the job of a law enforcement officer is so deep inside of me that the the bads and the old have fused themselves to my heart. Right. And I would do the job for free. As long as I had enough compensation to pay my bills, right. that is the bottom line. So by offering 50% of my first year's salary as sheriff of Clark County, which I think probably amounts to about 80 grand, okay. I think the sheriff makes about 160 thousand dollars a year or thereabouts. Okay. I will get 80 thousand of it to my three favorite charities, and those will be the Salvation Army, Stop DUI Inc. And safe nest. Uh, these are for women that are are uh, beat up in uh, abusive relationships and uh, victims of battery domestic violence. So that would be like a domestic so, violence shelter. Is that what that is? Yes. Okay. That's exactly what it is. Those are my three favorite charities in this community. That that is nothing. That I wish it could be more, but uh, that that really is is just a pittance. Right. For the type of work that they do. And for the good that they do, because I tell you, Las Vegas is a pretty violent place. Right. And, you know, you figure it's, it's built on prostitution, gambling, and drinking. I mean, that's that's the, that's how Las Vegas came to be. And things really haven't changed all that much. Got a lot of fringe on the outside, but that's basically what it is. It's a party town. You come in here, and you can pretty much uh, buy anything that you want. Right. Now, the police department keeps it all within limits, and it makes sure that no innocent <laughs> person gets hurt. That's Supposedly. <laughs> Supposedly. <Yeah. laughs> if they're honest, if they're honest, good ones um, will agree with that. Right, right. <laughs> so, uh, that, that, is always, that has been my goal is to make sure that there is one place in this community that if somebody is victimized, that they can go seeking justice and truth into a place and not be re-victimized. Right. Well, that, that's your, that's your toss-up. That's your gamble now. And people have that feeling about our police force, and they shouldn't. And, it, and that, that wounds me when I, when I hear that from people, that, uh, you know, like what Shane said, you know, people coming up behind you, uh, you see a, a police officer pull up behind you with his red lights in his car, and, he, and you don't know if you're going to make it out of there. And the bad thing yeah. about that is this is coming from someone who's been in law enforcement for 15 years. So if if someone who has been in law enforcement and, and has been in the dirt just like you have, and they're feeling <laughs> with... Shane Harger being a police officer for 15 years and he feels that way. Can you imagine how much more the citizens are? And that, that stems back to the question, do you think we can turn this thing around or 
is it going to come to a point where the police officers that are true blue, that are real police officers that are like you, are they going to have to take off that uniform so that people can know the difference between the good and the bad? No. It, it's all going to depend on leadership. Right. Who do, you have, who do you have at the top? And you must put a real cop at the top. I think Frank Serpico was the one who stated, police corruption can only exist if it is condoned and tolerated by upper management. Right. That's it. And that's, that's all we got to do. All we got to do is put the right person. He has to be a constitutional sheriff. He has to be true. He has to be honest. He has to have integrity. And he has to know how to police with ethics. Right. right. And I have those qualities. I've always had them. Nothing's changed. I've never sold my soul. Never. Well, right. And I agree with that completely. Um my followers actually know that for me to say that I would vote for somebody uh, means an awful lot because I don't say that. I, I'm not, and anybody who knows me knows, I'm not Republican, I'm not Democrat, I'm not independent. I don't associate myself with any affiliation to any party whatsoever. I look and dig into the individual person and I want to see um, what they stand for hardcore. Um, and for me to say that I personally would vote for you, I personally would vote for David Laurie Vanderbeek, says a lot. Um, and I've told people that over and over again because I know I've, I've worked with you all long enough to know I have put you through the coals and the fire on your questions. Um, and and I've, you know this, I've, I've dug and, and everything else, and I really cannot say anything against you that would cause me to even think for one second that you would not be the best candidate, that you would help Nevada citizens, that you would actually stand up and help the cause of liberty and freedom by simply doing your job and standing for your oath. Without wavering, Lori. Without wavering, because I cannot be bought. Right. I cannot. I don't owe anybody anything, and nobody owes me anything. And I never will put myself in a position like the past sheriffs, the present and the past sheriffs have done. They have sold their soul, and most of the time they've sold it to the federal government. They've received gifts. They received money. They received toys, tanks, vehicles. You name it, once you do that, they own you. And this is what's happened here. None of this in the Bundy uh, Ranch situation would have happened had we had a constitutional sheriff that he didn't need to come up there with uh, uh, the SWAT team and, and numerous other police officers to show how mighty he is and show uh, a show of force. All he had to do was just single-handedly, all he had to do was go up there right at the beginning and lay the law of the land down that he is the top law enforcement officer in this county and nobody in this county is going to have their constitutional rights trampled on uh, without his permission. Without his permission for the federal government to come into Clark County, he would consider that criminal activity against his word, and he would have arrested. He would have arrested or should have arrested those BLM agents for what they did. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, even according to Nevada law, just one of those cows, um, whether it was them taking them or especially the murder of them, that was grand larceny. And, and the, uh, let me see if I can pull it up, because I had it at one point of how much they actually would be facing just for one uh, cow. I don't have it pulled up right this second, so unfortunately I I don't have that. Well, right off the bat. It'd be a felony right off the bat. And uh, uh, we're probably looking at uh, uh, one to seven years right off the bat. Okay. Yeah, that's for every cow, each cow. Yeah, that's for each cow. Um, that's right. The, that's be, and how many did they kill? 
So it would be a minimum. So you're looking at one to seven for each cow, and then all those complicit in the crime are just as guilty as those who perpetrated the crime, correct, Gordon? That is correct. That is correct. Okay. Here we go. I do have it. It's NRS 205-220, grand larceny definition. And it says, right. except as otherwise provided in NRS 205.226 and 205.228, a person commits grand larceny if a person intentionally steals, takes, and carries away, leads away, or drives away personal goods or property with the value of $650 or more owned by another person. And then, of course, it covers the bedding and furniture, it covers cattle, it covers all of that. And then it says, I'm going to go all the way down because this is a very long definition, but it says, sells or purchases the hide or carcass of one or more head of livestock owned by another person that has had a mark or brand cut out or obliterated, kills one or more head of livestock owned by another person, but running at large, whether or not the livestock is marked or branded, kills one or more domesticated animals or domesticated birds, with an aggregate value of $650 or more owned by another person, but running at large, whether or not the animals or birds are marked or branded. Well, the penalty, it says under 2F5.22, it says, unless a greater, greater penalty is imposed by specific statute, a person who commits grand larceny in violation of NRS 205.220 shall be punished pursuant to the provisions of this section. If the value of the property involved in the grand larceny is less than $3,500, the person who committed the grand larceny is guilty of a Category C felony and shall be punished as provided in NRS 193.130. If the value of the property involved in the grand larceny is $3,500 or more, the person who committed uh -huh. the grand larceny is guilty of Category B felony and shall be punished by imprisonment in the state prison for a minimum term of not less than one year and a maximum term of not more than 10 years and a fine by not more than $10,000. Well, that right there, and then the, the duties, you know, you've got listed the duties of the, um, according to the Nevada peace officer duties, according to the law, they are required to remove and arrest the BLM and the higher hands for grand larceny of the Bundy's candle under 205.230. Then under 205, let me get the exact um, one, under 205. Give me one second, gentlemen. I got it. It popped down on me. <clears throat> no problem. All right, let's see. Okay. According to Nevada law, money's due is not an excuse nor a defense against being charged with grand larceny. NRS 205.265. Commission or part ownership is no defense for larceny. And it states, it shall be no defense to a prosecution for larceny at the accused was entitled to a commission out of money, out of the money or property appropriated as compensation for collecting or receiving the same for or on behalf of the owner thereof, or that the money or property appropriated was partly the property of another party, the property of the accused, but it shall not be larceny for any bailey, factor, pledgy, servant, attorney, agent, employee, or trustee, executor, administer, guardian, officer, or other person to retain his or her reasonable collection fee or charges. So they're allowed to collect their fee. They're allowed to collect their charges. But they are not even allowed to do the grand larceny. Um, even according to the Nevada law, it's not an excuse to do what they did to Bundy's cattle. That's correct. The, uh, the NRS uh, has several sections that have to do, again, with cattle wrestling and theft of cattle. Now, if you look under the theft statute of the NRS, it covers 